Come on, hit yourself. Just once. Just once. Okay, paralyzed. Whatever. I can work with that. You're half dead. I'm happy with this. I don't wanna... I don't wanna push any farther. The confusion could be very, very bad. Toss a beast ball. I have 34 of them to blow. Come on. Come on, buddy. That's a one. That's a twosers. Oh my god, are we really gonna... Hell yes! I didn't think I would do that with half his HP bar still there. Hello everybody, my name is Kareem Bro. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Moon Super Blind Nuzlocke. I wasn't talking because I was going to start the episode with this, but... And, and I, was, I was expecting that I was going to be here for the six or seven attempts at this thing. I didn't think I'd get him on my first try. Guzzlord's data. Okay, well it's not technically the first try, I know it's the third, but whatever. Get off my ass. And I know technically it shouldn't go by the rules of a Nuzlocke either, but they kept giving me chances, so I'm guessing that in order to finish the side quest, I had to catch it. It is a dark. It's a dark and a dragon. It weighs 1957 pounds. Still not as much as Mudsdale, though. A dangerous Ultra Beast. It appears to be eating constantly, but for some reason its droppings have never been found. That's disgusting. So it's got a really big mouth with a lot of teeth. Its arms are also mouths, and then it's got more arms up top. Uh, two sets of faces. It's, it's a really weird looking thing. Junkivore Pokemon. Let's check out uh, the stats on Guzzlord here. Let's see its summary. I know it gets increased to attack. Oh, wow. Okay, so it is it is the HP-est of, H -H of tanks. This is this 400 HP! I know it's level 70, but still. Uh, special attack and attacker through the roof. Its defenses actually are not that good, which is... I guess that explains why a few key moves, like, absolutely slaughtered it. But I got a, I got a crit out of, uh... Candyman there, and it didn't do a lot of damage. Hmm. Ring out. Uh, the more HP the target has, the greater the move's power. Gastro acid eliminates the effect of the target's ability, and then thrash and heavy slam the ones that I knew about. Okay. Wait, what? Oh, oh, never mind. I was I was looking for that one move. I didn't understand what was happening. That like that purple rings that he used on Stenata at the beginning of last fight. It, that was ring out. I forgot about that. Okay, cool. Well, let's chuck Guzzlore to the box, and we'll head back to the end boat, because we're totally done. I think that's probably the UB side quest completed. Let's see, do I, do I still not have any kind of escape rope? It looks like I do not. Ugh, all right. Well, I will cut back to you guys when I get there then, because I'm sure I'm going to fight a Golbat or seven on the way out. Okay, we're landing in town. So, just- just in case, just in case, I don't think they're gonna throw a battle or something at me, but, you know, just in case. Stenata took a couple hits, Yak took a couple hits, Candyman took a couple hits. I gotta swap everybody out. Well, not swap them out, but I gotta give them a quick heal, that's all. And I guess I should also report while I'm walking over to the other place. Uh, since this is the first Pokémon that I'm recording after Con Bravo, I have gone and, uh, found and picked up the next game that I would like to do in this series. I'm probably gonna take a bit of a break from Pokemon, but I do want to come back to it. And I have the next title in my possession. Some of you guys in the comments might already know what I'm talking about, but for those who don't read the comments, congrats, you get a nice little surprise and I'm not gonna spoil it for you. <laughs> All right, let's head in. What up, Looker? What voice will I give you today? What is it? Has something happened? Or do you need some information from me? I'm all done! Amazing, bravo, you've done it. I must call the chief back at once. From that buoy I left her on out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> I finished sending the data from the UB you protected to HQ and to Miss Wick as well. Thank you for your hard work, Kubeans. Now we will be able to learn all there is to know about Guzzlord, otherwise known as UB Glutton. We've done it, chief! We have completely banished and sealed off all of the UBs from our world forever, except for the ones that are currently still locked here. But we're gonna pretend that those don't exist. <laughs> You've successfully contained all of the UBs. Thank you so much for all your hard work on these missions, Kubeans and Mr. Looker. I- you- you didn't let me do anything! You made me stand in the room like a 
big old douche nozzle. It was all you and Koo Beans. Much to my protest. <laughs> and now that we've finally completed our missions, I will treat us all to a feast of... <sighs> no, no, we will not. I'm not hungry. How many times do I have to tell you this? But, but I, uh, we finally reached it, our grand finale, which we should end with a big feast. Our truly final mission requires that we go to Aether Paradise and report to Miss Wick that we've contained all the UBs. Yes, good, ha ha! I didn't know that this was gonna happen, but it does work out that we did not go and waste our time checking in with every, every one of them. <laughs> Indeed, you're right, and we must thank her for the Pokeballs known as Beast Balls. We'll be going to Aether Paradise to report to Miss Wick about our success. Why don't you come along as well? We make for the secret labs in the lower floor of Aether Paradise! Looker, you do know that we're in a public restaurant, right? What? I'm just saying we're going to the secret labs at Aether Paradise in basement B2! Behind the giant locked doors and the password is 7XC9! What's the big deal? I'm just making sure we all have the same information. We don't want anybody to be locked out, do we? <laughs> Why don't you join us, Scooby? <laughs> <laughs> so can I get like a teleport here? No, I cannot. I have to go and do it manually. Ugh. All right. Anyways, um, I I got my list around here somewhere. I can't. There it is. Actually, no. What am I talking about? I'll check the list later because we have to finish up this one first. We already know what we're doing. We're gonna go to the basement two F lab area. <laughs> I guess everybody at Aether already knows about the secret labs. But which lab? This is the real question. Is it this one? Uh, it is not. Aha, cool. I did hit the wrong one first. All right, you're just talking about the cryogenically frozen Pokemon because that's depressing. All right. That looks like space for another secret lab where there are three and then they just like modularly moved one out. How did you get here before me, Annabelle? You teleporting bitch. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I wanted to think of something more clever. I'm failing my New Year's resolution. Clever swears are hard, guys. We've been waiting for you, Koobeans. Aw. Koobeans, thank you for coming. I'd like to thank you first for all of your hard work containing the UBs. On behalf of the entire Foundation, I would like to offer you our most sincere thanks. That's it, though. We can't give you anything else. Aside from the, uh... Pokeballs, of which you still have like 34 of them. They're worth about a million dollars each. It'd be cool if you could get that back to us at some point. <laughs> All the UBs that appeared from the Ultra Wormhole, which opened in the earlier incident, have been caught. Oh no, we're the ones who should be thanking you, I think. We could not have done it without the use of the Beast Balls you provided for us. Oh, they're negative assets of the Foundation. I'm happy to see them put to some good use. I hardly know how I can thank the two of you. <laughs> the three of us, don't forget Looker. I want to say neither of these things. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with three of us and hope that she assumes it's somebody else. Yes, Mr. Looker also did a great deal to help us with this mission. Damn it. But I thought that he left before us. What is taking him so long to get here? I know that I told him we would meet here. Could something have happened? He's gonna come in with a bunch of Chinese food. Tai Hei Da! No, seriously, come on, after all this time. I'm sorry, I know it's a terrible habit, but I can't help it. And more importantly, it's a disaster. <sighs> what is it? I was on the way here when I stopped by Melee Melee Island to get some of their famous and delicious malasada as a gift to you all. When I just finished my purchase, I chanced to look up the sky, and there, there it was. A mysterious black something was zipping across the bright blue sky over Lola. It was black, and yet it was shining somehow. It was like it was refracting light. It must have been a UB. No, it, 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 it. I, I got that mixed up. It, it might have been. I'm sure it was. We haven't had any word from HQ about there being more. Please rest easy. I don't think it was a UB. We have a hundred of our Foundation members working in parallel with the International Police Investigation and scouring Lola for UBs. We've not detected any other than the ones you already contained for us. So shut up, looker. All right, then. <laughs> Perhaps I was just dazzled by the brilliant shining sky that stretches over Alola and that I've seen for weeks since I've been here. Just all of a sudden, I had a hallucination. And it is little wonder you were dazzled. You've all been working so very hard. You must be very tired, Mr. Looker. Well, yes, I suppose I could do a little break. 
and now you can have it. Judo chop! <laughs> Just put him to sleep. I received a message from HQ saying that our paid leave has been approved. You, you mean actual vacation time? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I say we're free to do whatever we'd like until we get our next orders from HQ. I hope you all use this chance to relax for a little while, Looker. I think I'll stay here and have a good look around the Alola region. Not for work this time, but just as a regular tourist doing some sightseeing. Then I think that I will go and eat all my fill of delicious Alolan cooking. There's simply too many restaurants and eateries that I wish to visit. You do that. I was hitting my mouse button. That's not hooked up to the computer. And the traditional sushis at the Dishy High Roller are absolutely sublime! <laughs> Sushi High Roller? Oh, I completely forgot. I was supposed to be meeting someone. But we have... We... we, we I, I, let me get our feast, woman! <laughs> no, not a date. I'm meeting with Mr. Nanu. We owe him quite a bit for all his help. Yeah, I suppose. So if you'll excuse me, Kubeans, everyone. I'm afraid I must be going. a weird pause. I hope we meet all again someday. She's got a weird nod. It kind of like rotates her shoulders too. Yes, my young Cubeans. I also owe you my thanks. Because of your efforts, we were able to keep the shape safe until the end. Folks at HQ thought you need to be paid for your work, so they sent this. Take it. You received one million dollars! That's the most legit reward I've ever gotten! <laughs> I think that's the time I went. I'll be staying in the motel on Melee Melee, so feel free to stop in any time. Bye! The UB conservation mission is complete. Alola shines beautifully. No punctuation. Well now, Miss Wick, it's just you and me left. You wanna go get a drink sometime, or...? <laughs> Just ask if there's anything I can ever help explain. All right, cool. Let's check the UB data. Which Ultra Beast would you like to learn more about? Nihilego first. Let's just go through everybody. Properly known as Nihilego, there have been sightings reported of this beast in Alola's past. Its most distinctive feature is its parasitic capability. When Nihilego latches onto a host, it does not manipulate its actions directly. Rather, it awakens the host's own capabilities and boosts them to an extreme extent in order to protect itself. It injects the host with a sort of neurotoxin to achieve this effect. It's incredibly stimulating and inspires feelings of extreme excitement and a lack of inhibition in its host. In any ways, in other words, anything or anyone that Annihilego latches onto will have its native skills forcibly activated to their fullest extent and will then act as it naturally desires to. So, super drunk. <laughs> Except without, without the slurriness. What's next? Pheromosa. Codename Beauty, properly known as Pheromosa. This UB was sighted for the first time following the incidents at Aether Foundation. This UB can reach speeds exceeding 120 miles per hour in just an instant. The speed is greater than any other living creature that has been discovered to date. But its most distinctive features may be in fact be its beauty and its powerful pheromones. Most any creature that squares off against Pheromosa becomes confused as if struck by the beast's beauty and loses the will to fight. It's thought that Pheromosa may possess some sort of organ able to produce a pheromonal substance previously unknown to science. Hmm. That's kind of cool. No, I don't want to know about the beast balls. Actually, that's, um, fuck. Okay, well that actually looked kind of interesting. Life forms from another world. If you try to throw a regular Pokeball, the ball will have a difficult time recognizing the creature as a Pokemon, and so capturing the function will be significantly impaired. But these special balls allow you to capture beasts quite normally. Cool. So what's so special? The UB surround themselves with an aura called the Beast Boost. The truth of this aura is that it is energy that flows within the Ultra Wormhole. They are bathed in a great deal of this energy and likely store it. There are also Pokemon on our planet that possess the same kind of energy, the so-called totem Pokemon you face in our trials. Hmm. Weird. Zerkatry, the one that took, uh, Krem Krem. Codename Lighting, properly known as Zerkatry. Sighted for the first time following the instance of the Foundation, its most distinctive feature is an organ that can generate power. Bodily makeup is highly reminiscent of electrical wiring, this enabling it to conduct electricity with great efficiency. It can discharge as much as a million volts. It begins to run out of power, it stabs its legs and tail into the soil, entering a tree-like state to absorb electricity from the ground. I don't know if that's possible. Electricity always goes to ground, but it's being grounded. It then dissipates everywhere. You can't get power from the ground. 
blaster, properly known as Celestila. Its most distinctive feature is the energy it absorbs stores in itself a flammable gas that it can shoot from its two huge arms. It is mostly used to propel itself in flight and for battle, but it is thought to have sufficient power to lift and even fly into space. Bodily construction closely resembles that of a plant, I knew it, absorbs nutrients from the soil. And lastly, UB Data, Guzzlord. This UB has been sighted in the past as well, according to our reports. It seems it was targeted by the International Police in a top secret mission at that time. The limitless appetite, it feeds without pause every moment that it is awake. It uses two large tongues that protrude from its mouth to catch and devour everything in its path, be it organic or inorganic matter. And while it eats such an inordinate amount, Guzzlord excreta has never been discovered. It might fully convert the things it eats into energy for it to use. Hmm. How does it get rid of that much energy, then? That's the real question. And that is all of the info about the Ultra Beast. So huzzah! We did it! That's one of the major th story thread plots that's being wrapped up in the end game. Yay! I guess? Sorry, I last recorded this like weeks ago. The enthusiasm and like drive of being on this has definitely waned a little bit. But going back to my list, I can cross that off of it. UB Quest, out. I was also told that I had to go to the Aether Conservation Area and check it out since last time I was here, I did not look around. So let's do that. I'll take the path that was initially available to me upon first coming here. Nope, that's not the path. Just to, just to make sure that I make a full lap and see everything. Cause, oh wait, I did come up here and check these guys and they didn't say anything new, that was it. And then I turned around and bailed. All right, well, I'll not do that this time. Let's see what they were actually trying to hide from me up here. This is just a path that leads back to center. So how you guys doing? I'm excited that I'm almost at the end of this game. Well, I mean, I'm already past the end of this game, but I'm almost at like the end end, the post game end. As much as I've loved this game, I'm definitely pretty ready to set it down and move to something else. Like, I, I, I just like playing games for, like, new experiences. And that must be what they were looking for, for new experiences. And, uh... Not to say this game isn't throwing me new experiences. But I'm definitely, like, it, it's not... It's not fresh experiences anymore. It, the wow factor is largely, like, dissipated. So, I'll be back in a second. Buddy, I just wanted to check over here and make sure there was nothing else I was missing. All right, cool. So since I'm kind of expecting this to be an actual battle, I think I'm at, yeah, I'm, I'm good with Stenata up front. She is, uh, it, it's, it's, whatever. I'm gonna call Stenata a she. I like it, I, I like calling it a she. Um, got the paralyzed, so if we get battle, I can do that. So you came. I guess I've got to thank you for all you've done for my family, especially for Lily. I never knew she could smile like that. My mother's desires to reach Nihilego and what she did in order to achieve that goal. I know she was completely out of control, but that doesn't mean I can't understand it. It was my father who started it. Ah, there's a dad in the situation. He was the one who first confirmed the existence of Ultra Wormholes and Ultra Beasts. But my father, he disappeared during an experiment trying to conduct or connect to an Ultra Wormhole. All that he left behind was a weakened cosmog in his papers about Nihilego. Lucimine's obsession with Ultra Wormholes and her obsession with the Ultra Beasts. I think it was all basically her way of trying to reach him again. And that's what I had to believe to get through it. I was, I was just about, just about to outrage. Nuh-uh, don't you try to be putting a spin on this thing now. She was such a good, crazy bad guy. Just let her be. But then, then that line. And now it's a thing for Gladion. And not so much a thing for her. And I like it again. It's not an apology or anything, but I hope you'll take this fellow. Ah! I got a time doll! Ah! The horrifying beast monstrosity! Okay. 
Well, I have to imagine that that thing's gonna get, uh, yeah, how to describe it, my circuits are tingling. I, I'm gonna guess that this thing is probably gonna get tossed to the back along with the rest of the legendaries. Due to the danger of the synthetic Pokemon may go on a rampage, it wears a control mask to restrain its power. Ooh. Like, do you have Type Nolan nickname? Nah. We'll check the summary, but... Probably just gonna dump it, honestly. It's only level 40, too. Wow, if I wanted to use this thing, there would be a lot of catch-up to do. Battle armor. Heart armor protects the Pokemon from critical hits! That's awesome! And look at those! Look at the- Oh my god, it's so perfect! This is a perfect Pokemon! It's slow? It's got high attacks, it's got even higher defenses. And this one, I got lucky with a nature that's giving it more defense! I can't use it! Yay! <laughs> Alright. Chuck it into the PC. But I got it! <laughs> Future me insert a thumbs up guy right there. And I'll give you all the memory drives that let its evolution civilly change its type. Ooh. It's uh... You guys can't see me, but I'm making the like f this this like this arms forward thing. Pokemon, why did it take you this goddamn long to learn this lesson? A stack. You got a stack. You don't have to tell me every individual item. You've done this before with berries. You've done this before with stones that like change the way types things move. Just do this! I can look up what they are later! <laughs> it's like 35 and a half by the time you learn this lesson. This is a different type, no, not the same one I ran away with. It was kept in secret lab A. Its very existence was a secret. But I think I know you well enough. I think I can trust you to show it to the world. Maybe it's time I see a bit more of the world myself. And starting with that Pokemon League, I think. I hear that Alola's got a real strong champion. Yeah, you kind of passed me on the way up the mountain. But I've already seen the uh, the Elite Four once, so I'm not going back to have more challengers come up and fight me. Sorry, guys. I know it's a thing that can't happen, but I'm not going to be doing it here. I've already made my second run there. I got Pokemon down. <coughs> Not Pokemon. Pokemon sounds even grosser. I got coffee down the wrong tube. I'm dying. With that done, this seems like a pretty good place to leave this episode off. It's nice and contained. It doesn't need to be any longer than this. UB stuff is wrapped up. Aether Foundation stuff is wrapped up. Next time, something different. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. <coughs> This episode of Pokemon Mood Superfly Nuzlocke. Uh, hit the like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Share it with anybody that doesn't know who likes this kind of game. And, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.